All right, guys, let's talk about two ways to create portable operating systems so you can have fully installed operating systems on a USB flash drive to take them wherever you go. This is not persistence. This is actually a fully installed operating system or operating systems on a USB flash drive. There's more than two ways to do it, but today we're going to cover two of the most common ways, or at least common ways that I use. Uh, the first one is probably one of the most common out there. It's Rufus. If you guys haven't seen Rufus, check out some of my other USB videos um, or just Google it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's similar to like uh, Etcher or any of those other applications that allow you to create bootable USB drives. But to create a portable USB with this, first thing you're going to do is select the USB drive you want to write to. You're going to select the ISO. A uh, little tip if you guys didn't know about Rufus, you can actually download Windows ISOs directly through Rufus. Excuse me, through Rufus. So you can pick 11, 10, 8, 1, and then you hit continue. There'll be more options as far as versions, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, you'll get to actually download the ISO so that you have it. But if you already have an ISO or if you download it somewhere else, that's fine. Today, I'm just using Tiny11 for the demo. And then this is the option. By default, it's on standard Windows install. You need to drop that down and select Windows to go. This is going to create that portable um, installation of Windows on the USB so you can just take it wherever you go. And then you just hit start, let that run. It'll take a while. It does take a little longer than if you're doing the standard install because it's actually, again, doing the installation locally on the USB drive. And if you guys don't have a USB, I would say 3.2, a true Gen 2 that can do like 1,000 plus megabits per second write speed and close to 1,000, I'm sorry, read speed and then close to 1,000 on the write speed, I wouldn't even bother with this because I've tried it on 3.0 drives and it's it works, but the performance is unusable. I mean, it'll eventually boot up, but yeah, don't waste your time if, if you don't have a like a portable M2 SSD or a true USB 3.2 Gen 2. Um, and if you guys haven't seen my new USB drive that I just released on the shop, it is using a true solid USB 3.2 Gen 2 that hauls some serious ass and that's why I'm able to do things like this with a, a drive as such. But anyways, for the purpose of this video, this is the first method and this is not the best method in my opinion for a couple reasons. Uh, one, I've seen some performance issues. Again, not so much when using the 3.2 drives, but uh, the bigger reason for me anyway is this is going to dedicate the entire stick so if I have a 250 gig stick, 256 gig stick, and I use this method, I have effectively used that entire 256 gigs for a standalone portable install of Tiny11 or whatever OS you selected in this step. So for some of you, maybe that's your use case. That's great. That's fine. Uh, enjoy. It works. If you would like to do it the superior way, in my opinion, <laughs> make sure you have Oracle VMware, I'm sorry, Oracle VM Virtual Box installed. This is free, free to use, free to download. Um, and then you would just build a new VM, and instead of taking that ISO over to Rufus, you would put that ISO, connect it to the new VM, and then run the install from that ISO. So that's what I did here uh, with Tiny11. I just connected the ISO, ran through that initial install, and then once that's done, I just reboot once for good measure, and now I have an installed operating system, and then I shut the virtual machine down in a clean state. And what you're really looking for is the VHD file. So this is the virtual hard drive for the VM, uh, for the virtual machine itself. Um, once you have that, what you need to do next is get a USB drive and install Ventoy. Uh, that's a matter of a couple clicks. I'm not going to run through it here, but if you guys haven't seen my series on USB, I cover everything A to Z for you to create awesome uh, multi-boot USB drives. So once you've installed Ventoy, then you're going to create a blank folder called Ventoy, and then you'll head over to the Ventoy website, or you can just Google Ventoy VHD, and you have to download this IMG file. That's really all you do is just download it and stick it inside of the Ventoy folder that you just created. Once you've done that, guys, you've now enabled your Ventoy stick, or gave it the capability of booting VHD files, which is totally awesome in my opinion. So as you see, I have a bunch of ISOs here. This is my new version 2, uh, the greatest USB ever made. I would love to debate anyone who argues differently. This is the fastest USB, the most well-rounded. It has everything anyone would need, whether they're getting started in IT or they've been in IT for years, or they're just a geek at heart. Uh, it even has an arcade on there, guys, so I'll definitely link the, uh, the product on that if you want to check it out. But yeah, now we can boot not only ISOs and IMGs, but VHD files as well. And again, we were able to control the size of that. So instead of 
having a 256 gig I just went in there created the virtual machine with 20 gigs and there it is alright guys so that's how you create a portable operating system in two different ways and again if you go the Ventsway route I think it's far superior more flexibility but hey let me know what you think maybe you've tried different methods what's your go-to way to create portable operating systems guys hey I hope you stuck around to the end do me a favor hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't I just cracked 5,000 pretty stoked about that I'm doing a giveaway uh, that's good for about another week so if you haven't checked it out make sure you check that video out guys I'll put a card up here so you can get entered to win one of my brand new USBs alright guys thanks a lot for tuning in Till the next one have a great day and take care guys